I am going to document um, this project that I'm playing with at the moment that uses Rainbow to sonify uh, weather data on a Raspberry Pi. What I have here is a slider that picks a note and then an event or a trigger that um, plays that note. The idea is to take these parameters and map them to um, simple data input. This is the weather station, this is the wind vane and the anemometer. And uh, here I've got it plugged into the Raspberry Pi. Um, on the top of the board, this is a little, little circuit board that I put together, but really all it's doing is running some pins from this um, integrated circuit, this little chip, which is an MCP. See if it, how close I can get in. Not close enough. One second while I uh, look at this. Mm, can't read it. <laughs> so it's an MP, MCP something. And this allows us to um, take analog voltages and read them into the Raspberry Pi using I squared C, I think. With Rainbow and the Raspberry Pi, being able to create a physical standalone piece of hardware is super, super neat. And Raspberry Pis are also super, super neat, but they have some particular quirks when compared to other um, sort of electronics um, platforms like Arduino. So in particular, the Raspberry Pi does not have um, analog inputs. You can't just hook up a potentiometer and read that knob. So it's hard-ish to get um, knobs and sliders and other analog values like the weather station that I'm using into, um, into a Raspberry Pi. It's not impossible, um, it's just more technical than you might want it to be. So what I want to show in this project is both Rainbow itself running on the Raspberry Pi, but also um, one particular approach to getting analog input into the Raspberry Pi without needing to type very much code, if at all. And that's by using the Node-RED framework, which is a, a JavaScript visual programming language. We can use Node-RED in conjunction with um, a very simple electronic circuit using a MCP something to read in analog input. And this is mostly within a visual programming paradigm. So as a stack, I think it's a really nice approach because it's all visual and Node-RED's really, really cool because it's built for like home automation. So it, if you wanted to integrate, it, integrate a um, rainbow uh, based Raspberry Pi hardware device into home automation, for example, you could work with Node-RED, but you can also pull in things like um, Twitter or other um, internet hooks. So it's a very flexible tool for expanding the inputs and outputs that your Raspberry Pi is capable of, all in visual programming land, which is a, a land that I like to live in <laughs> a lot of the time. I want to map this slider to the weather vane. So basically I want to create like a circle of pitches, a circle of notes, and, and the weather vane essentially points to which note you want to play, and then the um, wind speed meter, the, the metaphor there is going to be sort of like a beater spinning around, hitting a gong or something like that. And so the, the beater spins around, uh, the faster the wind blows, the beater hits the gong faster, and the um, direction of the weather vane maybe swaps in and out that gong to be a different different note. So we get a, a, a musical representation of, of the direction and the speed of the wind. Um, my, my plan with this is really just to give you an overview of the patch. I'm going to provide a um, written um, step through guide to implementing this, um, which I'll provide a link to below. So what I have here is um, the carpless oscillator that I got from the file browser. Um, the file browser you can find here on your patcher. And if you um, write in the file browser kind, um, colon, and then R, and there's an autocomplete, I'm looking for rainbow patches. And here are the example rainbow patches, which um, you can see where they come from here. So these ones here are from the Rainbow Synth Building Blocks package in Max, in the Package Manager. So in there is the Rainbow Synth Building Blocks. And
And in the rainbow synth building blocks, we have things like oscillators. There's the carpless um, string synth simulator thing. And then, um, so that's what I've got at the moment. And the other thing that I'm using here is the Scala feature of the M2F um, objects or sort of rainbow more broadly. So with, within rainbow, there is sort of as a first dish class citizen, the Scala objects, which lets us, lets us work with all of these microtonal scales. Um, now, this has become really interesting to me, sort of um, serendipitously, synchronistically, um, because I got really into DCI during the pandemic. That was one of the things that got me by. DCI is um, American marching bands. The horn lines in particular in DCI have a particular aesthetic quality to them and that is created by, um, or one of the things that creates that is one, there's heaps and heaps and heaps and heaps of horns, but the other thing is when they play, for example, a major triad, the um, instruments playing the third of the triad, they play sharper than we normally would in in Western music. And so you get these really nice, transparent, big, rich chords played by just like a gazillion horns. So it sounds a bit like this. Dissonance. <laughs> so good. Uh, in Western music, um, we use most often a selection of musical notes, the 12 notes in our octave, using um, a particular tuning system that we sort of take for granted that music that we can play music in this particular way and we might you know be able to do something like change key and because of course you can because it's music we've got these 12 notes why wouldn't you be able to do that but the thing about um, the tuning system that's a built-in assumption to our western musical cognition or perception um, is that um, mathematically it's very difficult to have a system in which your pitches or your notes are perfectly in tune and in which you can play in multiple keys. Just a quirk of quirk of the universe essentially and so um, what that means is most of our major thirds when we're listening to a major third in uh, like a major third triad yeah okay here we are so a major third is slightly different in different musical tunings. In just intonation, it corresponds. So just intonation is sort of uh, physically accurate, um, if you if you would. So for example, in just intonation, it corresponds to a pitch ratio of five to four. So it's a perfect ratio. In equal temperament, a major third is equal to a ratio of two and a third to one. So slightly different ratio, which is thirteen cents wider. So I think that means our um, just uh, our equal temperament thirds, the, the thirds that we use in Western music are 13 cents sharp. 13 cents is quite a lot. And so here, this is the sound of a just major third. Now, to me, it sounds a little bit off, but at the same time, very consonant. So there's this sort of, um, there's the dissonance of my general overall perception of what a third should be and the consonants. I think I'm sort of hearing like a phantom dissonance of 13 cents. That's sort of the sense that I get. But within that, within that sort of dissonance, there's sort of a recognition that it's a very transparent, um, simple ratios. I'll play it again. very pure and clear and open so that's a very interesting sort of aesthetic quality um, I find and the scale that I've been enjoying playing around with has been a five limit um, five limit tuning system so this is all very this is this lines up very well with what now exists in rainbow with this um, Scala Scala system which lets us 
work with all of these tunings. Okay, here's our setup with things plugged in. I have my Raspberry Pi um, 3 with the MCP3008. It's an MCP3008 and the uh, weather station and the potentiometer plugged into that. I'm powering the Raspberry Pi off of the off of my USB hub and then I have a Focusrite 2 in 2 out interface for the Raspberry Pi. When working with Rainbow and a Raspberry Pi, you do need an audio interface. You can't just send out of the headphone jack, unfortunately. And then I've got that Scarlet coming into a pair of headphones because <laughs> I don't actually have a 3.5 millimeter um, audio cable, which I need to plug into my little speaker. I might not be able to find one. I might be able to. Um, we will see how I go with that. Um, and then let's pop over to Max. On the left here, I have my rainbow um, object, which holds my code that I'm going to send to the Raspberry Pi. And then over here, I have the rainbow remote, which I just pulled out of the help file for rainbow remote. So what this allows me to do is control and communicate with the Raspberry Pi from uh, the laptop. So the development workflow here is really, really, really nice. One thing we do need to do initially when we're getting our, when we're going to send our code over to the Pi is um, we need to set our audio interface and we also need to, uh, yeah, export our code to our Pi. I, my Pi is hooked up onto my network, same wireless network as my MacBook, and I can see here that um, I'm connected to this particular remote C74 RPi. And when you flash um, Rainbow to your Raspberry Pi, you can give it a different host name, and um, that's how you can identify various Raspberry Pis. I've only got one here, so this is the one I'm going to use, and I can see that it's automatically connected. Super, 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 super easy. Very, very cool. So let's pop over to Rainbow. Right, so I've just double clicked on my rainbow object and it's brought up my rainbow patcher. On the right, you can see this uh, export export sidebar, which we don't have in regular Macs. This lets us export our rainbow patch to whatever target we want to export. Now I want to send it to my Raspberry Pi and it's popped up here in my devices. So I'm going to double click this. And before I actually flash the code or export the rainbow, rainbow patcher to the ra uh, Raspberry Pi, I'm going to set up the audio on the Raspberry Pi so it knows to look for the audio interface. So if you go into audio config, if you pick your Pi in the drop down, it populates these menus. And in this, um, in this list here, we can see the various hardware audio interfaces that we have access to. The one we want here is HW3, USB audio, that's my Scarlet interface. By default, it's HW0, which is dummy, which just doesn't do anything. So I'm going to pick my um, USB sound card. And then we can set a sample rate here. I'm just going to leave it at 48,000. And then click to update the Pi. Doink. And I think that worked. <laughs> OK, I can hear something. It definitely worked. Uh, let's close this. So we've set up our audio. Now let's um, export. And in this case, it's as simple as clicking this export button. Do 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 do. Okay, so we're in a pretty good spot here. We've got our Raspberry Pi set up. We've got um, our development environment going. Now I want to start um, doing a little bit more in-depth work on the Raspberry Pi, and to do that, I'm going to need the IP address of the Raspberry Pi. There are lots of ways to get the IP address, but perhaps the easiest is if our Raspberry Pi is connected here in Max, we can go to our Rainbow. Um, patch, and in the export target um, sidebar, we can go to our device. This gives us information about our device. In particular, it gives us our IP address. Now, this is really useful because this lets us send OSE messages to control our Raspberry Pi, but it also lets us access web interfaces. So, Rainbow has a web interface by default. So, my IP address is 192.168.0.101. And then this, after the colon here, this is a, um, a port. And the port, in this case, is serving up Rainbow's default web interface. So let's go have a look at that. 102.168.0.101. And the port is 3000. There we go. Um, so this is given, uh, this just gives us the parameters that are exposed um, in, our, in our Rainbow patch. This is quite useful for debugging, but we're going to look at a bit more of a flexible method for interfacing with our Raspberry Pi. And we're going to 
we're going to use node red. Now, um, node red, just like um, just like Rainbow's default web interface, has its own web interface that allows us to patch, essentially, work in a visual programming environment in the browser. So this here is the draft of the of the um, write up that I'll, that I'll put up, and we, we we've flashed our pi, um, and then we've got our IP address. Here are some instructions for setting up Node Red and the MCP. I'm not going to go through these in detail. I'm I'm simply going to introduce you to Node Red here. So we can see here that in your browser, go to the Pi's IP address one eight eight zero. So again, this is a port. Everything after the colon is a port. So one eight eight zero is our no, node red environment. So let's have a look here. Bonk. If I installed node red already, which I did, here we go. Here's node red. And so far, all I've done in node red is created a really simple, what are called flows. Um, so in Max we have patches, in node red we have flows. And um, I've created two simple buttons that essentially let me shut down the Raspberry Pi or reboot the Raspberry Pi. And I've done this as a test to just make sure that Node Red is working. So the first thing I'm going to need to do here is um, install some nodes. I might have already done this. Maybe not. Maybe not. So by default, we've got these various nodes that we can use. These are like objects in Max. Um, we can do things like write files, read files, or watch a folder for changes. That can be really useful. Here I'm sending um, bash commands or terminal commands to the Raspberry Pi, so that can expand what we can do with our Raspberry Pi. But what we don't have at the moment is OSC, which we're going to need, open sound control. And we also need a um, third-party node to bring in our MCP 3008. So um, let's look for those. Now, like in Max, we've got a package manager. Node Red has a palette. And if we open up our palette and we can look in install, I should be able to search for MCP 3008. There we go. MCP 3008. Install. And while that's installing, I'm also going to look for OSC. And I think this one's called Contrib OSC, this one here. That will give us some open sound control nodes. Okay, it took a little while, but we're installed. Um, and we've got two new nodes. We've got an OSC node, which lets us send and receive OSC. Um, and we've got this AD converter. So the AD converter is actually our MCP3008. So AD converter is analog to digital converter. So here's my MCP. This is what I'm going to read my um, values in. And then we're going to do some magic. We're going to turn them into OSC messages. And then we're going to forward them locally over to our um, Rainbow, over to the Rainbow Runner, which is running our Rainbow patch. Okay, here's the uh, working node red flow. These nodes are the range node. They work exactly like the scale object in Max. So they'll take an incoming range and map it to another range. The filter node, this one here, is uh, just like the change object in Max. So it filters out repeated um, messages. So I'm not con constantly sending out OSC messages if I don't need to. And then uh, the OSC nodes, we'll have a look at in a second. They're simply creating our OSC message that is attaching the value that we're reading from our MC P3008 into uh, attaching that to an OSC address and then we're sending it out as OSC. Now I'm doing a little bit of a trick here to be able to hear what's going on since I don't have a have a cable actually to let you hear what's going on. Um, but before I go into that let's just talk a little bit about open sound control in Rainbow. So here in Rainbow I'll open up my Rainbow patch again and have a look at my inspector. There are a few addresses here. One of these is this HTTP WebSocket URL. Now this address, which you can see it's the same IP address with another port. This is our um, OSC query address. So if we go over here and type it in, which I did here, it gives us what is essentially a, 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 a JSON file. And this JSON file describes um, all the properties of our rainbow patch, including the parameters and the OSC addresses that we need to control those parameters. So if we if we sort of like squint and try and find what's going on, we, we want to access the the pitch and the trigger parameters. We've got slash rainbow slash instrument slash zero slash param slash pitch. 
So this is our pitch OSC address, and then we've got rainbow inst, inst zero params trigger, and that's our trigger OSC address. And we have normalized um, addresses for both of them as well, which is really nice. If you want to send normalized values, we can. That is a value between 0 and 1. If you want to send um, non-normalized values or specific or absolute, whatever you want to call it, values, then we can do that too. So what I did is I copied this, the um, rainbow int 0 params pitch. That's our OSC address for pitch. I copied that. I pasted my OSC address into here. Dunk. And then I did the same for speed, which is our trigger. Um, here I used the normalized address because I'm sending a value between 0 and 1. And then I grab my OSC objects and I send them to a UDP out object. Just like, just like Max, instead of UDP send, we've got UDP out. Now one thing I did do in here is I set this to a broadcast message. What this means is my Raspberry Pi is now going to be sending OSC messages to any computer on the network that is listening on the port 1234. Here's the max patch with the uh, OSC coming in, getting sent to um, our parameters and being sent to our rainbow object. Now the same thing's happening locally on the Raspberry Pi where our sensors are coming in and then Node-RED is reading in those sensors and sending OSC just, doop, just next door over to the rainbow runner and that's running our rainbow patch here locally. So we've got one set of sensors going into Node-RED and then running Rainbow on the Raspberry Pi and Rainbow here locally in Max. Um, convoluted, but useful. So if I spin the anemometer, we start hearing it do something. And if, as it slows down, let's spin it again. And now if I turn the wind vane, We can see we're getting a different pitch. Doesn't sound great just yet, <laughs> but we're getting it working and then we'll make it sound good later, hey? Okay, next minute, um, I got a bit sick of that carpless oscillator. So I've sort of simplified things a little bit. I've um, manually specified some notes in a list here. And then I have two oscillators here. So they are playing thirds from this um, set, of, set of notes. Um, so I'll just hit play. Dunk. And so the speed of the anemometer cuts the signal, essentially like an LFO, controls the speed of an LFO. And then the wind vane chooses the pitches that it will play. So this is doing something. I think I might try and go outside. <laughs> and um, see if we can make the wind do something. I will need to be running, unless I can find a, find a cable, I will need to be running my laptop, which sort of defeats the purpose <laughs> of setting up a Raspberry Pi, but we're still using Rainbow, so, you know, let's, um, working within the limitations of van life at the moment. So now we've got to go find some wind. Um, might just try and find somewhere open. It's very nice out here. Okay, I found some wind, where there seems to be some about, and uh, that rock looks like a good little laptop stand. And uh, there's lots of insects to have a jam with. I just plugged the Pi in. That's my little router there. Everything's running off of the uh, USB hub to power things. I think I see a light on the Pi. Um, we plugged into the focus right, although we're not actually using it. <laughs> we're really just Grabbing, um, I was grabbing the sensor data, sending it as OSC over the um, network to the computer, and the computer is running Rainbow and um, hopefully generating some sound. If it comes to life, oh look at that, it's working. Let's turn it on.
Now, I don't think I'm getting OSC, because uh, this seems a little bit too static. Okay, so one issue I had there is that I didn't have my sound card plugged in. I don't know why that wouldn't have been sending out OSC, but hopefully we come just magically come to life. I am running out of battery. <laughs> I'm still just getting zeros out of this. I think I might be wrong, but I so I had this potentiometer just floating around in my bag, and I just sort of chuck this in with my bag, and I'm a little bit. And when I plugged it in, the um, potentiometer was on the bottom of the pie. I'm a little bit worried that I might have shorted something, um, but I don't know. I do not know. So, might be a fail for today. Okay, back in the van. Um, I've got some sun on the solar panel, at least for the moment. So I'm going to charge this up while i got some sun and have some lunch and maybe see if we can get this going tonight, but not optimistic. So I've replaced the MCP here um, and I still can't get this to work. So I'm a bit worried that I may have fried my pie. So that puts a little bit of a dampener on this whole whole video. After some um, disappointing hardware failures and limited resources being in a van, um, I've had a bit of a think about like what resources do I actually have here to do something with the patch that I've generated. So I've um, I've edited my patch a little bit and um, I've jumped over here to the rainbow example web page on the github I'll post a link in the description I've um, copied this I use this link to clone the repository but you could also download it as a zip file and, and unzip it somewhere and um, that appears as a folder like this here rainbow example web page and now we need to export our rainbow patch into this web page somehow and then launch that web page. So this is how you do that. Over in my rainbow um, patch, we were using devices, our Raspberry Pi. This time we're going to use uh, JavaScript. And then I need to choose an output directory. Now this output directory needs to be um, the export folder inside the rainbow example web page folder export to selected target and then we wait okay and that's exported so now what we need to do is run this server and the way we do that is by opening up a terminal in the root directory of the rainbow example web page one way you can do that on mac is to go up to finder and go to services and there's this option here new terminal app folder and this has opened me up to rainbow.example.webpage and now we need to run, uh, what was it? npx http server. I think that's it. Dunk. There it goes. Okay, so my server is running and it's told me here that I've got two addresses that I can use to access this website. One is 127.0.0.1.8081 that's localhost, so that will work on this machine. But what I want to do is use the resources I have available to me, being my van's um, car stereo. So let's see if we can get Rainbow running on a 2010 Volkswagen Transporter. Welcome to the cockpit uh, of, of my van. My van's name is Sven. Uh, it's a 2010 Volkswagen Transporter with 356 kilometers on it, and it runs great. So here's my head unit. I've got a browser here. Let's add a new tab. Add a new tab. <laughs> and uh, I did... Oh, go away. Go away. Go away. Oh, save. Whatever. Okay. Here we go. One, nine... Yep, oh, let's hit enter. Okay, pa loading my patch. Here are my parameters down here. Come on, buddy. Come on, buddy.
the way the station worked and then it broke and I can't fix it, at least not right now. But on the upside, my van now runs Max. So I'm gonna call that a win. Bye.